Hey guys, what's up? This is Corbett and this is going to be my Ashes of Outland preview. Okay, so this video isn't going to be me talking about every single card and giving it a rating out of 5. This video isn't going to be me talking about a whole bunch of um, really off-meta, janky type of lists. I'm going to be talking about the most important, impactful cards of the set for each class um, and how a lot of the top tier decks are really going to change and all that kind of stuff. Um, however, I know that a lot of you are interested in theory crafting and you want to see a variety of lists and all that kind of stuff. Uh, fortunately, I was able to get on uh, stream with Get Me Out and we had the chance to talk over a whole bunch of lists. Um, Get Me Out has done a ton of work beyond that. So he has like, he has so many deck lists for you guys. Uh, so he should have videos out very, very soon. Uh, covering that kind of stuff so if you guys do want to see like a whole bunch of theory crafts you gotta you guys want to see like all that kind of content um there'll be a comment uh pinned basically <laughs> just linking you to that video uh so yeah go check that out if that's your kind of thing but otherwise uh let's jump in all right so what's going on with druid in the set um well the most important card for druid is fungal fortunes uh fungal fortunes is a two mana draw three cards uh, discard any minions drawn. Okay, so two mana spell, draw three cards, discard any minions. Um, fortunately for Druid, uh, Jade Druid in particular, they don't tend to play many minions, so this is very consistently <laughs> just gonna be two mana draw three. Uh, obviously very, very strong. Um, Druid tends to not really do anything on turn two, so this fits that kind of, uh, spot really well. It curves into Jade Blossom, so... Um, you're very, very consistently going to be able to fetch that J Blossom, just draw into it uh, with this card. It's very, very strong at like kind of all stages of the game. Uh, just really, really powerful. Um, probably the next most important card for Druid is Overgrowth. Now, Overgrowth, I'm a little bit less certain on. Um, Overgrowth uh, reads uh, Gain two empty mana crystals. It's obviously reminiscent of pre nerf Nourish. Uh, Nourish was 5 mana, but you had the choice between drawing cards or mana ramping, and the mana that you got was full. So, you know, you could Nourish for mana and then Wrath something on the same turn. Um, Overgrowth is a lot less immediate, you know, you, uh, you don't get to make another play alongside it. Um, but, you know, it comes out a turn earlier, which is important. I think Druid's really in this tricky position right now, where... It's actually can't really fit in all these good cards. <laughs> like, people for a long time have talked about Druid having this sort of, uh, you know, like 24, 26 card core, uh, where basically every Druid deck kind of looks the same. And, you know, at this point, it's more like a 30 card core. It's uh, <laughs> it's tough, man. There's, uh, there's so many good Druid cards that it's going to be a little a little bit of a deck building puzzle, I think. Yeah, I think, I think the important part, Fungal Fortunes, and we'll see about Overgrowth, but Overgrowth is probably quite good as well. And I think there's going to be a little bit of a deck building puzzle. Uh, with Jade Druid and really trying to cram in like all these all these really strong cards because you know you're gonna cut something. All right, next up let's talk about Hunter. Uh, so Hunter's set wasn't particularly impressive to me. Um, it kind of looks like it lacks a lot of these like four to five star cards um, that some of the other classes got. And you know Hunter is definitely playable right now. There are, there are a variety of Hunter decks that. You know, it could get to legend with and stuff, um, but it is still one of the weak classes in Wild, and I don't think anything in the set um, really indicates that it's that's going to change uh, dramatically. You know, I don't really see Hunter becoming top tier. I think the Lion, named after you know most recent like world champion, uh, I think that card's really really fantastic in a Egg Hunter list. Egg Hunter is one of my favorite Hunter archetypes. I had a great time playing it back in the uh, Snip Snap meta. Um, it, it's like perfectly, you know, it, it curves really nicely with the, the eggs, with the two mana eggs or the three mana devil saw egg. Um, you know, you can just picture scenarios where you play, uh, you know, very simply play the devil saw egg on three, the opponent doesn't want to pop it. Uh, and then you play lion, which is, you know, four mana five, two rush, summon a five, five. That's really powerful. Um, it also got some additional support from the neutral pool. Uh, one of the strongest neutral cards in the set was uh, Terran, where, you know, it pops your eggs, but it also brings them back and gives them ability to pop themselves, you know, so your, your Nerubian is now one mana, th like, uh, but one three, and it can attack off. Uh, so it's just really, really strong, um, especially on a multiple egg board, you know, it, like, if you're, if you're playing this on turn four or five with multiple eggs on board, it's just ridiculous. Uh, so I think Egg Hunter got a ton of support, and I definitely want to try that. 
Um, as for some of the other Hunter cards, I, I'm not really impressed. Like, I know there's been some talk about Knuckles Hunter. Um, some people have been talking about this Big Beast or, you know, Spiteful Hunter. Uh, I don't I don't really like any of these particular archetypes. Um, so I think it's really just all on... In terms of new cards, I think it's kind of all on Egg Hunter. Uh, I'm sure people keep playing things like Even Hunter and that kind of stuff. But yeah, um, not, a, not a fantastic set for Hunter in my opinion. Okay, next up, let's talk about Mage. Everybody's favorite class right now, guys. I mean, everyone's played it. People must love it. Oof. <laughs> um, Alright, so what did Mage get that's important? Uh, there are really like two cards that are really critical, I think, for looking at the Mage set. Uh, the first is Evocation. Um, legendary spell, fill your hand with random Mage spells. Random. Uh, at the end of your turn, discard them. Cursed Mage is a very strong archetype right now. This card is... There, there are going to be situations where this card is just bonkers. Um, it, it has a chance to be a little bit dead in hand sometimes, which I think people might be overlooking. Um, but it's so strong in, in two specific situations. One, uh, against aggro, you often have to sort of just put everything on the table and just like just go all in, uh, which can leave you being very resource depleted. Uh, it's also just really great with Apprentice, like at any point. Uh, with Apprentice, this card is just nuts. <laughs> it, like, you can just picture scenarios where, like, Apprentice comes out, Evocation comes out, you, you have, like, six random spells in your hand, you can play out, like, two or three of them for, like, two to three mana, um, and it's just, like, a quest completion, right? It's just, like, a cyclone. It's, uh, it's so ridiculously strong in that spot. Um, so, yeah, Evocation is very important. Um, and next, the second most important card for Mage, uh, the Portal, the new secret for Mage. Uh, Netherwind Portal, secret, after your opponent casts a spell, summon a random 4 cost minion, so, you know, another card for secret mage. Let's talk about Pally, um, Pally got these Librams, which seem really cool, it's standard, um, <laughs> they will see no play in wild whatsoever, they push towards this, like, uh, slower, dirtly, mid-rangey value game, which has no no place whatsoever in wild so we're already like looking at the paladin set i'm already crossing off about half the cards which you know a bit of a bummer um <laughs> on the upside uh paladin did get a really really important card a uh, powerful card hand of adel hand of adal i don't know words words are hard um give a minion plus two plus two draw a card so obvious comparison mark of yashage this is just an unconditional mark of yashage um it's absurd it's it's really really strong um I like it with eggs, obviously, and like an aggro paladin. Um, we are able to buff up that ruby and egg and, you know, kind of do that kind of stuff with it. Um, I also like it in Murloc Pally. Um, and I think I think Murloc Pally is the deck that got the most blatant support uh, when you look at the entire set uh, for, for paladin. Where Hand of Adel is really, really strong because Murloc Pally doesn't have very good two drops. It has Rock Pool and then it has dot, dot, dot next. Um, yeah, so it's just like Rock Pool, right? So, like, it has really strong one drops with Biofin, Sir Finley, Mermy, Tidecaller, all this really good stuff that you can do on turn one, and very little fo follow up. Um, so, an unconditional mark of your charge, draw a minion, draw a card, give a minion plus two plus two. Um, just excellent, right? All of a sudden, it's turn two, you have a three, four, a three five Murloc on board. That's great. Um, so, yeah, it also, it also got some other pieces of support with the weapon. After your hero attacks, add a random Murloc to your hand. It's reminiscent of Anchor. Drawing a card is better than a random Murloc, but, you know, the attack's better. Like, the more attacks straight up. Um, and it can't, it can't buff its own weapon the way Pirate Warrior does, but, you know, you, you guys get it. The card's good. You know, <laughs> 3 mana, 3, 2, get 2 random Murlocs. It's a lot of refill, uh, which is very, very important. Um, it also got the Prime Murloc card, which I think is fine. Um, I mostly want to play it because it's a 2-drop that doesn't completely suck. Odd Pally didn't really get anything. Mech Pally didn't really get anything. Alright, next up we have Priest. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> Alright, so let's let's address the first one, the uh, the Prime. 1 mana, 1, 3, Lifesteal, Death Rattle, Shuffle, uh, your Prime into the deck. Um, where it can test board really well, they can't really ignore it. Um, you might even play it in like an Inner Fire list, um, just because of how how the lifesteal really, really um, scales nicely with buffs, uh, buffs like Balance Chosen. Um, but yeah, I, I'm really not sure beyond Reno Priest where you, you might play this, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Um, Renew is another really good card, again, for Reno Priest. Uh, restore 3 health, discover a spell, uh, so it's, you know, 
very very good at sort of like this cheap heal um, when you're you know in a pinch or just contesting board you know healing up the minion getting a resource for it it's pretty good right um, discovering a spell is always fantastic like I think this card might be good enough to play if it just gave you a random spell the fact you get to discover one really great um, so yeah definitely like arena priest card um, and then the Soul Mirror, the other the other legendary for the set. Summon copies of enemy minions. They attack their copies. Um, obviously reminds people of Mass Hysteria. People have talked about it being like a light bomb. Um, it's a weird card. <laughs> it's hard to evaluate without really like seeing how it works consistently. Um, but you know, another another potential clear for uh, for Priest. Um, but yeah, Priest is in a Priest is in a dark spot. I think right now. Um, Reno Priest is a deck that. Is just farmed so hard by Quest Mage, um, and it really doesn't have much beyond Reno Priest. Uh, they they kind of gutted Inner Fire with the Power Shield nerf. Uh, Big Priest has been very weak historically uh, at this point since the Barnes nerf, and yeah, there's not really a ton of like new stuff getting pushed by this set. So I think Priest is in a pretty rough spot. I'm not really impressed that much by this set for Priest. Um, and you know, well, it's just gonna heavily lean on that uh, that Raza Priest archetype, which you know is frustrating for someone like myself who's tended to like Inner Fire Priest and Mind Blast Priest, those kind of decks a lot. Um, but yeah, they don't seem particularly viable or supported by this set. Uh, See, so yeah, I, I don't think Priest got a ton that's that important. A few minor upgrades potentially for Reno Priest. Um, but yeah, that's about it. All right, next up, let's talk about Rogue. Okay, so Rogue are probably the most impressive set to me. Uh, in terms of like pushing new archetypes and really pushing these new themes uh, and in Rogue's case hell We got two of them, which is really exciting. Uh, we got stealth and secrets So first let's talk about the stealth stuff. All right, so spy mistress one mana three one stealth Really really great body um, very aggressively statted obviously uh, can make these really sick value trades. I love the way it scales in the mid game sometimes people forget the one drops actually can be drawn in the mid game or like beyond turn one and how they perform in those scenarios are actually like really important um so spy mistress scales fantastically on like turns four five six which is which is great um it's a really powerful card uh will it see playing odd rogue though i'm not sure uh some people have said like obviously but i'm a little bit more hesitant um the weapon in odd rogue often gets to make these value trades for you uh so it's mostly just coming out as a one mana three one body um, which is good. Is it as good as some of the pirate openers? Eh, probably not, um, but it might make the cut. We'll see. All right, next up on the stealth list, we have Slayer. Uh, give a stealth minion plus three attack and immune this turn. Uh, fantastic card. Um, it is a little bit clunky uh, where just, you don't really have like a, a complete density of stealth minions that are really worth running. And so that's kind of my entire fear of the archetype, right? Is that do we have actually have like enough, enough playable stealth minions? Um, we might not, and that would be the, probably the biggest thing that holds the archetype back. But if you do, uh, this card is fantastic. You know, it's like a blessing of mind and immune. Like it's it's disgusting. Uh, you get to make these really sick value trades. Oh hell, you can just like push a ton of damage. It's great. Um, really powerful card, uh, and curves beautifully with the spy mistress. If you just want to punch someone in the head for six, that sounds good to me. Um, <laughs> and lastly, in terms of the stealth payoffs, we have Greyheart Sage. If you control a stealth minion, draw two cards. This card is probably the best one in terms of the stealth payoffs between Slayer, Sensei, and itself. Um, it's fantastic, you know. Uh, Arcane Intellect with a 3-3 body attached, that's really great. Um, in an aggressive deck that really needs card draw and needs to keep pumping through resources, uh, it's fantastic. So yeah, cards are blatantly very, very strong and a big part of why you'd want to even try this whole stealth package. And lastly, we have Cursed uh, Vagrant, another decent card, and I think this might even make it as top end in Odd Rogue. Uh, next up, let's talk about the secret stuff. So we have Stunner, and then the uh, uh, Shadow Jeweler. Those are the two secret support cards. Uh, Stunner, if you control a secret, return a minion to its own hand, it costs two more. Um, so it's like Sap or Freezing Trap targeted. Um, it's broken. <laughs> it's like, if you, if you were activating this effect, it is one of the best cards that we've ever seen um it is the reason why you even consider playing secrets uh in rogue so yeah this card's fantastic uh and jeweler jeweler is really cool too uh often you can just play it out on turn two as a one five body very hard to remove 
And then on turn three, you could go like Rogue Secret from hand, discover a Paladin Secret, play the Paladin Secret, and then discover another Secret. So a very high tempo turn that gets you those like additional resources. The card's, card's pretty good as well. Not quite stunner, but you know, very cool. I really like it. Um, and then we have the three Rogue Secrets, Ambush, Bamboozle, and Dirty Tricks. Um, Dirty Tricks and Ambush kind of remind me of Explosive Runes Counterspell, where they're very difficult for the opponent to play around both of them at the same time. They're kind of in this trap where, you know, they play Minion, they activate the Ambush, but they might think it's Counterspell and give you two cards. Um, so yeah, they, they really work well uh, in conjunction. Um, and they're both just very, very strong individually, you know, like after your opponent casts a spell draw two, that's great. Like you might just play this in rogue decks, like without even any secret synergy, you might just jam this because it's two mana draw two, it's, hell yeah. Um, and yeah, that two mana for a poison, it's obviously, uh, or obviously reminds people of, uh, Venom Strike in Hunter, except it's much easier to activate, so that's really good too. And the Bamboozle, when one of your minions is attacked, transform it into a random one that costs three more. Um... Another really good secret. Um, I think it's probably a little bit weaker than the other two, but yeah, very, very, very good. Um, this entire set for Rogue is fantastic. It's probably the best set that anyone got. Um, it does kind of suck a little bit that it doesn't support current archetypes like Kingsbane or Odd Rogue a ton, um, but I'm excited to try all this stuff out. And uh, yeah, I think I think Rogue is very, very happy. Rogue mains are happy for, for what they got here. All right, next up, let's talk about Shaman. Uh, Shaman got kind of shafted, <laughs> I'll be honest. Um, the, the Shaman set is very mid-rangey, and again, we've talked about this, it just doesn't belong in Wild. Um, there's not a current, not a, not a ton of current archetypes that got, like, really important support from the Shaman set. Um, there is one card I like, which would be the, uh, Serpent Shrine Portal. Uh, deal three, summon a random three-cost minion, overload one. Um, this card is really good, you know, like, Kill a thing, make a thing. Those cards tend to be pretty nice. Um, it can go face, like that, like the smog. And you know, it, it's also like a really good spell to draw off the uh, spirit of the spirit of the frog. Um, where previously we've been running lava burst, which is nice burst, um, <laughs> but you know, isn't very good in the early game. Uh, so yeah, this is really good with like tunnel trog and you know, just like that totem golem type game plan where you're just fighting for board and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, Shaman got a little shafted. I think it'll continue to lean on even Shaman. I don't think the portal pushes aggro Shaman enough, but you know, we'll see. Maybe someone uh, figures out something else. All right, so next up, let's talk about Warlock. Uh, so before going to cards, I just want to start with a list. Um, here's my theory card for Darkest Hour, which is goddamn terrifying to me. Um, okay, so why, why the hell does this scare me so much? And what new cards is this using? Um, Okay, let's start with like the, the basic stuff. It uses unstable Felbolt. Now, my understanding of Felbolt is that you don't have to have a minion on board. It just can activate if the opponent has a 2-3 and you have nothing because it's not targeting. Um, if I'm wrong, then, you know, uh, just ignore what I'm saying about it. But yeah, that's my understanding of the card. So one mana deal three to an enemy minion. Um, Dark Star is very passive. It tends to lack of minion, so there's no real downside to this a lot of the time. Um, Darkest Hour is a deck that has Defile and Dark Skies for, like, AoE. Um, it has Plague of Flames for very, very tall boards, but, you know, it does tend to struggle a little bit into these, like, single-target removals. These, like, this annoying 4-3 or this annoying 3-3 that you just want to get rid of. Um, you just want to deal with it, but you kind of can't. Uh, so I think that this, like, really shores up a, a hole in the early Warlock removal kit. Uh, which is annoying <laughs> because of how how strong that warlock removal kit already is. Um, See, so yeah, I think it's really good there. Um, I think that the the most important card though for Darkest Hour is um, Enhanced Dreadlord, um, eight mana five seven demon uh, taunt death rattle summon a five five Dreadlord with life steal. Okay, so this card's really good for multiple reasons in Darkest Hour. Uh, one. It makes your Void Callers hyper consistent. It's a good card off Darkest Hour where it has Taunt and it has Death Rattle. So if your opponent Poison Seeds, you get a 5 5 Dreadlord. That's really important. Um, so it, it's kind of annoying to target and remove from the board. Uh, the Demon Tag also means that you can actually run Skull of the Minari now. Uh, you have Mal, Double Void Lord, and two of this new Demon. Uh, so you're running like five really strong top end demons. Skull of the Minari on five, like. That, that's just so strong and like, it's like another another really high roll uh, for, for a Darkest Hour deck. Um, 
So I think there's like a multiple synergies that make this card really important in Darkest Hour. Another card though that people could run is the Dark Portal. Uh, four mana, draw a minion. If you have at least eight cards in hand, it costs five less. I, I don't love this card in Darkest Hour. Uh, with the Dark Portal, I feel like the average outcome might not be great. Um, I'm also like a little skeptical about the idea of just being able to like four mana draw a card. That seems very, very passive and uh, maybe not great. Uh, but we'll see, it's definitely like a card geared towards the archetype, so uh, that could be another potential another potential card that uh, Darkest Hour players could play and, you know, get a five mana your charge out. <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we'll see, we'll see about that. Uh, so yeah, Darkest Hour really spooks me. Um, I think Dreadlord's a great card for a variety of Warlock decks, and it'll see a whole bunch of play and push Skull in decks like uh, Reno Lock, where it hasn't really seen play historically. Um, there's probably two others that I think, or three others that I think are great. Um, okay, firstly, let's talk about uh, Dark Lair. Dark Lair is awesome uh, for a deck that might not be very good, but yeah, I think I think Dark Lair and Zoo, uh, you pair it with Librarian, uh, Flame Imp, and Crist uh, Crystallizer, oh, and Volga, Homunculus. Um, and you can just imagine scenarios where it's like, it's like turn four and like you play Dark Lair and like Flame Imp, you get two mana back. And then it's like, okay, so you jam like a Volga, you get another two mana. Or like you play Solarium and then you play like Solarium draws like Librarian and you get more mana and you kind of just like keep, keep having these cheating mana at plays basically, which is really important for wild, for aggro decks in particular. Um, and so I think, I think Dark Lair has some real potential to help out Zoo a lot. Um, does it do enough? <laughs> Probably not, um, but yeah, I think it has a lot of potential in Zoo as an archetype. And uh, speaking of, I think there are two other cards that help Zoo a lot as well. Um, Nightshade, Rush, uh, 4 mana 5-5 five, five Rush, uh, Battlecry, discard your highest cost card. It works really well with the 6 mana spell Hand of Gul'dan. When you play or discard this, draw 3 cards. So again, with like really pairing a lot of these cards in with a sort of like discard, self-damage package. So I'm excited to try Zoo. Um, I think it'll take time to figure out just like how to properly build it, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited to try it at like Zoo because it has been a, on hiatus for a little bit in Wild. Uh, so yeah, that seems really promising. But yeah, Warlock got a really strong set. Um, the Prime is potentially really good if you don't want to run Skull in like a Reno Lock. Um, and yeah, I think I think Dreadlord is just like a really critical card that a lot of a lot of Warlock decks are going to be playing. All right, now let's talk about Warrior. Okay, so to borrow a line from Memnarch. The warrior cards are interesting, they're unique, and they are completely unplayable. Uh, so that's kind of where we're at with warrior. Um, cards are cool, just don't really see a home for a lot of them. Um, I think the the one exception probably is Blood Boil Brute. Uh, seven mana, six eight rush costs one less for each damaged minion. I think this card is really blatantly just overpowered. Um, <laughs> I don't know, I might be looking at it a little differently than some people, I, I don't understand, I haven't seen that much hype about this card, but this card seems broken as hell to me. Like, there's so much minion combat in the game, that like, it's not hard to envision scenarios where like, there are at least like, two damage minions on board, at least, and all of a sudden this is a 5 mana 6-8 rush? Like, are you kidding me? Like, you can't really play some Pirate Warrior, you could play it in Galakrom Warrior, which would be really cool. Um, you know, there, there can be a lot of damage minions on board with like the Bomb Wrangler. The opponent doesn't want to really punch into it. And so like on your turn, you could punch into something, get a get the Bomb Wrangler injured, get the opponent's minion injured. Uh, and then you could like play Brute for like five mana. That seems really great or even cheaper. Um, even like as a baseline, it's like a seven mana six eight rush. It's not that bad. There's a six mana six eight rush is good. And at five mana or below, it's like really OP. Um, so yeah, this card seems great. I think you'd even play it in Odd Warrior for sure. It's just like really efficient removal. Um, so yeah, I don't know. This card seems great. But yeah, really, really strong card and the one really exception for the uh, Warrior set, which overall just isn't really going to cut it in wild, <laughs> to put it quite bluntly. Okay, so lastly, let's talk about Demon Hunter. Uh, I think Demon Hunter is sort of this, you know, it's entering the game a little late, right? Where it's just so far behind in terms of card pool for wild. Um, I'm very excited that the, the team added a new class. I think that's fantastic. Uh, definitely applaud them exploring, uh, you know, the, this kind of stuff and really adding that kind of content. I think that's awesome. Um, but the thing is, you know, they didn't they didn't give any Demon Hunter wild exclusive stuff, right? So you're just pulling from current standard Demon Hunter and some wild neutrals. There's no wild class cards for the class. Um, and that's gonna make it really tough, like really difficult to really catch up. Um, I think that the best chance 
Demon Hunter has is uh, odd Demon Hunter. Um, but yeah, I don't want to go through each card individually too much because, you know, there's so much going on with Demon Hunter, it could be its own entire video. Um, if you are interested in, like, really testing a ton of wild stuff with Demon Hunter, again, you can check out Get Me Out's content. Uh, he did a whole bunch of theory crafting, uh, including cards, including decks with Demon Hunter, so, you know, check that out. Um, but yeah, I, I think Odd Demon Hunter is the best chance. The one mana deal two or one mana gain to attack hero power is probably the second or third best odd hero power. Uh, so yeah, it's really, really great. It matches even Shaman one for one in terms of mana usage and killing a thing, which is fantastic. Um, but yeah, it, it tends to lack three drops. It tends to lack those uh, a lot of really premium one drops that I think you need. Um, but we'll see, you know, maybe, maybe it'll surprise. Maybe it'll be like a good deck. Um, but yeah, I think it's Demon Hunter's best shot just because like anything that resembles a standard build probably won't be good enough because if they're balancing for standard and making it on par and standard, odds are it's probably not going to be good enough for wild. Um, but yeah, I think I'm excited to try that a ton in standard um, and I hope everyone else is looking forward to trying out the new class too and hopefully there's something for wild even if, even if right now I'm a little bit skeptical. Um, but yeah, guys, that's it. That's my uh, Ashes of Outland uh, preview, going through all the most impactful cards uh, of the new set. Again, I didn't really talk about new archetypes very much. Sometimes that just happens with some sets where it's tough to see like any new archetypes really emerging because um, you know either the types of cards that are printed or because they're just a weaker set. Personally, I think the set's a little bit weak, which is expected when it's the first expansion of the year. They tend to be a little bit weaker than the others. Um, but yeah, yeah, guys. Uh, so if you enjoyed the video, you know, <laughs> let me know, let me know in the comments, like thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff. I would love to hear your feedback and any, uh, any criticisms tell me why I'm dumb and an idiot about this certain card or I missed this and that. Like I genuinely am looking forward to hearing, uh, what everyone has to say. Uh, I'm really excited for the new expansion. I think new expansions are fantastic. I'm a complete fiend and addict for, uh, new content. So <laughs> that's great. Um, but yeah, guys, uh, let me know what you think and, uh, I'll see you guys when the expansion comes out. Yeah. All right. Peace out. Bye.